Hey, it's Chessie from Squeegee Inc. and welcome back to Printer's Corner. We've got some fresh questions for you guys and they're about ghost images, degreasing screens and even what size screens do we use in the studio. If you have any questions for us, don't forget to use hashtag Printer's Corner and then I'll pick those up and try and answer those in a future episode. I'm going to get straight into the first question and it's from the Mustachio and it's about a YouTube video that we did about cleaning and preparing screens in bulk. So the question is, do you remove ghost images every time and thank you for your videos, they're useful. Thanks. The answer to that is, it depends on what ink you're using but and how severe the ghost image is. When we used to print water-based a lot, for like printing artworks, you'd always get ghost images because you're using water-based inks on the mesh and it's literally what the ink is supposed to do, which is dye the fibers. So dyeing the fibers of the mesh is just something that also happened. But often, if you actually held the screen up to the light, as you turn it, you can see if the ghost image kind of like disappears. And if it disappears and then you look really closely, you're not actually seeing a blockage in the mesh. You just see that the, the fibers are dyed and then it's kind of like, is that really an issue? It's not gonna stop any ink getting through on your print run. So why use a slightly aggressive chemical on the mesh and not prolong the life of the mesh by just degreasing it and coating it again and using it? So I think unless it's really bad, or it's getting in the way of you actually registering your screens because it might have been dyed with lots of black ink. If you don't need to, I would leave the ghost images, especially of water-based ink, on the mesh and just kind of get away with it for as long as possible, as long as it's not blocking it. However, with plastisol inks, it's normally more of a block than a stain um, because yeah, you just get these chunks of plaster link that haven't quite cleaned off. So it's more in your process to actually try and remove plaster from the mesh when you're reclaiming. So I don't really just cover the whole screen in like dehazer for example. I just take little parts and I, I work at those. So I'm gonna say it depends. I know that's an annoying answer with the ghost images question. Hopefully that answered it. If you agree or disagree, let me know in the comments. The second question we have is from Becca Jukes and it's also about the cleaning screens video. Hey Chessie, do you not degrease the screens? We have two more stages after removing the emulsion, a solvent rinse and then a degrease. I'm just wondering whether we are making our lives harder. These are the kind of steps that we do. So we've taken the screen off the press, we quickly take the tape off, put that away, scrape off the excess ink, and then we get it outside. And the people who make our dip tank, which is where we kind of like let our screens soak in some solution, they actually say that that's a plaster remover, emulsion remover, and then I've even heard people say that you don't even need to degrease after it. So I don't even trust the dip tank that much because I don't want plaster ink all over my dip tank and like, you know, on the surface and all that type of thing, it just doesn't sit well. So I actually do take the plaster link off with a chemical and rinse it off, and then I think it's clean enough to go in my dip tank. I just let the dip tank take the emulsion, well, actually soften the emulsion, bring it back into the tank, and then power wash the emulsion off. Whether I would degrease at that stage depends on whether I'm planning on quickly drying the screens and then getting them coated quite quickly afterwards. If those screens that I've taken all the emulsion and plaster link off are just gonna lay around my studio over the weekend, I wouldn't bother degreasing them at that point because I think they're gonna get dust and dust and stuff from the studio on them, which will interfere with my emulsion coating. So if you're planning on coating the screens straight away, definitely do a degrease always degrease with brand new screens because they always have grease and grime that you might not even be able to see on them. One of the mini questions in there was, do I use a solvent rinse and then degrease? A solvent rinse might be something like a dehazer. It's kind of like my previous question that I had about ghost images. I wouldn't 
just always in part of my process use a dehazer. I'd only use it when I think I need it. Or for example, if, if I'm printing a multicolor image, one of the screens might just have a tiny little circle. So I'm not going to do a solvent rinse on the whole screen. I'm just going to kind of almost spot clean and concentrate on that small little area because I also don't want to spread ink all over my screen. I would use dehazer and all those kind of aggressive chemicals quite cautiously so I prolong the life of my mesh. You'll probably, yeah, it, you maybe, maybe try without those steps and see if you still kind of get a good result when, when you're coating and exposing. Just trial and error if you think you're making life difficult for yourself because I'm sure each studio trusts the dip tank and all, that, all those chemicals a little bit more or less. Our final question is from, I'm going to say, Six Riojas 2X. And uh, this is about what size screens are you using in those videos? If it's a screen for our own studio, we have taken the step to standardize the screen size. So we only use one now. Uh, we used to use small screens and big screens like the ones we sell on our website. However, uh, we figured out that using the same screen rack, scoop coater, film positives like templates even that we use, if we keep all of those things the same and we use the same size screen, everything's just a little bit easier. I'm not having to use two different types of scoop coater. I can, I know where the platens are going to be for, for my images. Everything just kind of like falls in line and it becomes much, much easier. Um, so they're always going to be the 2331s and that refers to 23 inches by 31 inches and that's the outside screen dimensions. So those big screens means that we can actually just about do oversized prints and we can almost fill the whole platen up with image area. And uh, that's just something that we almost specialize in in the studio is doing really big prints. And it's something that we do for our own brand as well. We like to go really big and graphic just because just we can. So yeah, they're 2331s. To round up the main question of this episode of Printer's Corner about do you remove ghost images every time, I'm going to say not if I don't have to and if I can prolong my mesh, I will. <laughs>